Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Not very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's you good. Know? Yeah. Crazy yeah. March spring weather where yeah. I was telling you a few weeks ago it was below 40 mm-hmm. for an extended period of time. Very extended period of time. And then it went up to like 20, 30 above. And yeah. then last week it was doing this weird thing where it was just having its its like time of the month or something where it would start out real cold <laughs> and then by the afternoon it'd be real warm. Now, <laughs> now yeah, seriously. <laughs> now the weather is just like, okay, we're not going to get super warm. We're not going to get super cold. We're just going to chill at a solid 20 above. <laughs> okay. 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 As long as like the longer it goes on with me not having to plug in my car when I'm at work, the better. You know, yeah. or having yeah. to start it before I leave, all of that, the better. Yeah. Uh but, awesome. but yeah. yeah. Spring or whatever you want to call it. I, I don't even know if if we truly have a spring in Alaska. Mm. I really don't. I don't think it can classify. Just like some people would say, you can't really classify your summer as a summer. (laughs) (laughs) We have winter. (laughs) (laughs) It's just winter, light winter. (laughs) Winter, not so much winter, you know. But granted, this year, I feel like y'all in the lower 48 have been having a harder winter than than us up here. Some places have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. It has been, but here in North Carolina today it was it was a beautiful seventy plus in Central North Carolina, and it was was really enjoyed it. You know, some of the daffodils are are out, and you know plants are things are getting confused. Uh, it just seems you know, but because of climate change, things are blooming earlier in in some in some with some some of the plants. So, but uh, yeah, but it's it's been good. It's been that's good. Yeah. So I see you put it on here. Discussion yeah. about Oscar predictions. Yeah, well, it's just finally here, and kind of honest. When is, yeah. it's so it's this Sunday. It's, it's this Sunday. Yeah. Okay. I yep. had no idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why that's why I put. I was like, honestly, as far as other things, I mean, I know like today, I think the Fallout trailer dropped, and you know, and and then there was just like random shit like. Game of Thrones is confirmed to come in June. I was just like, well, HBO has been saying that for a while. They still didn't give an exact date. It just basically, I think it was a slow news day because I think, I think I saw this on like Super Tuesday because they were just looking for stories to write yeah. Uh, yeah, other than. Definitely a slow news week for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think it, you know, I think part of that is because of the Oscars coming up and um, yeah. Any, any, any uh, predictions? I mean, uh, uh, for me, I just think, you know, I, I'm just, expecting the os the oppenheimer sweep so so for everything um not well just about i think they'll you know i think they will clearly they'll get i think they'll get director supporting actor i think uh i think killian's probably going to i think the momentum's killian's way now for for best actor i know people were hopeful for uh, paul giamatti after uh was it the globes i think or critics choice one of those earlier ones but uh i think i think Killian's going to win that too. So, so what's going to be the upset? Because the Oscars always do this, especially with the four Mm -hmm. actor actresses categories. Like there's someone who they always like swap and you think like all. And so, and so if you're leaning towards Killian getting best actor, who's, where's the upset going to be? Um, it may be one of those below. Well, as far as above the line cat- categories, like because all of the no. non. Te- um, I'm just talking about best actor, best supporting actor, best actress, best supporting actress. I'm not talking about any other categories because I always find that with yeah, the Oscars, I, there's like there's usually someone get has an upset where the main contender didn't get it and everybody's shocked. Well, I, I guess. I think Lily Gladstone is, I think, maybe the front runner. I, I don't know if Emma Stone would be a. I don't know if Emma Stone. Would, yeah, that one's a tricky one because I feel yeah. like they keep going back and forth on it. Yeah. Where it to me, it's it's it wouldn't be an upset either way. Yeah. I mean, so the, just if, yeah. 
Yeah, if it were a true upset, I would say like a net bidding for for Nyad. But but yeah. I mean, but if it, but really with between Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone, you know, it's, I feel for me it's a 50 50. I think you watch four things, right? No, I haven't okay. seen. I've only seen one of these movies. <laughs> one of these movies. Which one did you watch? The Holdovers? I watched Oppenheimer. Oh, I thought you. I could have sworn you watched one of the other Best Picture nominations. No, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I think I have, but I, I don't think that's what, like those movies are what we're talking about in these categories. So, no, of course. Anyway, yeah. this is a very long rant about us <laughs> making predictions on things that we barely know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just more, you know, like I said, it was a slow news week. And, you know, but thankfully, the shows that we're watching and talking about this week is def- we're definitely not slow at all with uh with shogun and uh cl- closing out mr and mrs smith so i uh, yeah so take it away my friend did you hear that avatar got renewed for a season two and season three i did hear that yeah yeah, yeah. what what did you think about that I-, I wasn't surprised i you know i i mean it's been you know it has been like drawing viewers and um get you know but i, I was surprised it did the did do the full renewal, but they did, you know, but that, that was, that was, um, I guess that was also earlier this week. And I thought our upload was renewed for a fourth and final season. Yeah. I still haven't watched uh, season three. I know you did. Yeah. yeah season three was really good. Yeah. It was really, really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. You, but, you but, like season three, AKA download. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but even when I finished watching the third season, I was like one more, that's all they need. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's tough. It's tough. I mean, Succession had to say goodbye last year because four, yeah. four mm-hmm. in done that all needed to be said didn't drag on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I I agree with you. It's not surprising that it got renewed. I am surprised by season two and three. Um, but there's also, and I'm not going to delve. I don't. I'm I'm bringing this up just because I saw something, not mm-hmm. because I know anything about what actually is true or false about this, but I saw some things potentially happen on set between some of the actors and mm-hmm. the main actor in particular. There's a lot of speculation about if he should continue on because of some behavior. Now I don't mm-hmm. know if it's true or false. I don't know if that's just someone making up things um, to kind like, of pick on the good news. I don't know, but so was, was so was this like his conduct on set or things off yeah, set? Yeah, that... yeah, conduct okay. on. Well, I, I think it was on set, and I think it was conduct towards an actress on the Ooh, set. Okay, you know, so, and okay. she's. Speaking up, and I I don't recognize her from the first episode, so I'm not sure okay. um, how big of a part she had, huh. uh, or she's even continuing on in seasons two and three. To so, if she's not, maybe that's why she's speaking up about it. But I, I'm also just thinking, man, what could have happened? Because that kid looked young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, whoa! But you know, I don't I don't know. So. So it's just, it was interesting to me that all of a sudden they get renewed and then some of this, some of these stories happen, but then again, it just, it just started. Um, And so on top of that, with, with Avatar, the last airbender being renewed, we also got word that Shogun um, is FX biggest premiere episode. Mm -hmm. Um, like I think around nine million viewers. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it surpassed the bear. I'm not surprised by this, <laughs> just because the bear is like the 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 um. It's how do I explain this? I think the bear because it's not necessarily at the like forefront. Mm-hmm. People are just like, okay, it'll drop. And then when I when I get around to watching it, I'll watch it without right. having to worry about spoilers. Yeah. So 
I'm not surprised by that. Um, although I'll be curious, considering how much second season blew up, how much the season um, three premiere yeah. will like draw viewers. Yeah. Um, but right now we're talking show good. A f- two episodes, three episodes have dropped now. Three, yeah. Episode three yeah. just dropped this past Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be playing catch up next week to get fully caught up on all of the episodes. Um, but for right now, we're just talking about the first episode because that's all Will and I have watched because we are doing One Piece rules right now with this show. And um, and so I have the synopsis, Will. I have the synopsis that IMD loved with. So okay. they said, they described this episode as... Destinies converge into Japan after a barbarian ship washes ashore in a poor fishing village. Meanwhile, in Osaka, Lord Taranga finds himself outplayed by his enemies. So, Will, yeah, what did you think about that, uh, this episode? So, I will say the IMDb summary is, is that captures really well what this, this initial episode is had as far as the storyline um but just as far as the, the series itself yeah as you noted it it did have nine million viewers as far as the premiere uh it, it's based off book written in 1975 by uh, james cabell and and for me uh this was a, a show too that it was one of the one of the big mini series back in the day you know it was like roots Shogun, the Thornburgs, uh, the 1980s version of this uh, show. I remember my parents watching. I think even you and I all, all maybe off uh, line when we were just trying to decide whether or not to add this to the rotation. Uh, I mentioned to you how this was like an event TV uh, back when you had mm-hmm. those weekly miniseries. So you know, and 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 it's, and it's based off of um, it's inspired by true historical events that happened in feudal Japan in the 1600s. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and the lead character, as far as, um, in, in the series of Shogun, uh, Tornaga was, was based off, a, a, a samurai at the same, at the time, um, uh, who was, who eventually led to his Shogunate was one of the three periods of peace in, in, in real life. Um, but, uh, so yeah, this was, this is, I, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I think, and I know we'll get to some greater details about it soon, but, you know, it is a historical drama and, you know, we've done some histor- historical stuff in the past with like the right stuff that we watched, uh, during the pandemic. Um, and, and of course, you know, a lot of people were really buzzing about this show too, because Shogun and then Game of Thrones came out, you know, Shogun was first, but then of course, um, the book Game of Thrones, uh, came out several years after this book and you know people talk about the space and historical dramas in, in these in these fictional worlds um works of literature uh and, and inspired by real events game of thrones being the war of roses shogun um being the shogun dynasties of japan back in the day and uh really just like the the, the, the details that they really put in, in the show as far as just political and cultural dynamics of the time uh with you know with trying to find that passage from portugal to japan and how the rest of european powers were trying to you know find that same open trade route and stuff and this opening episode really laid really did a good job of just sort of setting up all the all the arcs and storylines that we're going to see over the course of the next uh nine episodes why was it called anjin so that is uh the japanese word for pilot so it was a play on okay. words. Yeah. So it's a play on words for two things, because obviously John Blackthorne was the pilot of the Dutch ship. And uh, and also that's the pilot episode. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As soon as he said pilot, I figured that out. Yeah. Uh, interesting. OK. Um, but th- but I didn't miss them explaining that in the episode, did I? No. no. <laughs> OK. <laughs> no, like... but but they use I think they I think they use a Japanese word when they were referring to um to John I think I heard Engine mention pilot you know because that's you know obviously that's the term for him right when they were when they were having the conversations that right. was the, that was the other cool thing too about the series I mean they were you know they 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 did 
And, and I, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to the companion podcast or not. I know I sent it to you, but it talked about how they actually like went to the detail of you know, writing the script in English and then translating it to modern Japanese. And then they took it to someone who actually translated it to what Japanese language was during the period. And then right. that actually is what they actually used in, in filming in the dialogue we see in, in the show. Well, that is, that's that's very good because I I like just the fact that it's in Japanese. Yeah, and it's like we're not having and and I think I also heard everyone who's playing a Japanese part is Japanese, mm-hmm. and so it's it's being very honest yeah. and um, it's it's depict it's taking everything very seriously, and I think the authentic authenticity just adds more to why a lot of people are interested, curious, and probably will become invested in this show mm-hmm. and watching it all the way through. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, okay. So this, this episode was basically named after um, John Blackthorn, who thank God for Rodriguez um, yeah. because I, I like the show. I do. Mm-hmm. I like the show. A lot of political stuff going on. Very Game of Thrones vibes. All of that. But it was missing a, t- a Tyrion. Okay? And you're not in, like, yeah. Game of Thrones OG. But when I say Tyrion, like, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> 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 I needed a character who yeah. had some wit Mm-hmm. who was actually making some jokes mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> some levity to this because everyone was so freaking stoic yeah. and everyone and and honestly you can't really like John Blackthorn at all because he's being an asshole just as much as everyone else and you're you're kind of like dude don't you get it? <laughs> like, <you're, laughs> why do you act like you have power and and unknowingly you do, but you're not you're not at the head. Like this isn't your home. You're not on your home turf. So no. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, well, speak. Yeah, I love Rodriguez, the character Rodriguez as well, uh, because he, you know, he it, because it, again. And I, like you mentioned, the politics and everybody is working an angle in the show. And 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 so you know clearly you know he knows that whenever whenever we we first meet Rodriguez and you know whenever they brought him up uh, to to things and he you know, he was like has has an agenda yeah he you know he's like I'm gonna use this Englishman here you know for leverage and 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 take advantage of the situation here so. Uh, but yeah, he definitely has that 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 added element of levity. Even though I think John did have a pretty good. Uh, oh, I did laugh out loud whenever um, at at the part of the episode where um, John basically says uh, to the whenever the guy falls off the cliff, he's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry about your sack of shit, Lord." So I'm glad you yeah. bring up that scene yeah. Um, yeah. because at that right after it when he witnesses the um, potential sacrifice, Mm -hmm. um, self-sacrifice, and the look on his face, I was like, okay, all right. You're not, you're no longer this, this caricature. I I see, I see something else in you all of a sudden. Cause I, I thought that was really a fascinating moment. Just from mm-hmm. a viewer perspective, because I'm I'm also not it's it's weird. I'm not as like in much in shock or I didn't feel that much about the um the Lord willing to choose his own death versus letting the ocean make that choice for him. I was more in shock about John's reaction to that. Just because it's like, because they didn't, they didn't, I don't think they fully ex- have explained yet why he had that much of a reaction towards it. Like in mm. my mind, 
it leads allows the viewer to open interpretations like okay now he sees something in this culture mm-hmm. that he can't explain or that that he's kind of in just wh- why <laughs> he's just yeah. at a loss well, for words for like why 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 would that be a thing yeah well for me i think it's an interesting juxtaposition between john's reaction to the Lord in that context versus way when we go back to the beginning of the episode when when they're on the on the ship and the captain wants to commit suicide. It takes right, his own that's life. That's fair. That's fair. I, I completely forgot about that scene. Yeah. So I think it it really like because because I think it, what, you know, was, John, what was what was John's reaction again to him wanting to commit suicide? Because I swear I was like this dude it's not going to last very long so I'm going to like just stop paying attention he, to him now. It was he was he saw it as as cowardice and yeah it, yes. And, yes. yeah that that makes perfect sense like because and and then it's explained and I think even in that moment despite the look on his face a part of him is still thinking it is cowardice but then when Rodriguez explains it to him back on the ship is like, no, he he's making his own choice, like to mm-hmm. choose death for himself. Yeah. I think in that with that explanation, it kind of made him more like, OK, it's it's not as cowardly, especially in this culture, as I thought right. it was. Um, but yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And, and also. I think it further is further set up when we see the moment when the Council of Regents um, has, you know, whenever they're, whenever um, Tornaga's aide, like, steps out of line in the middle of the meeting, you know, breaks protocol. Yeah, and, that happens at the very beginning of the episode. Yeah, yeah, but, and, um, and, and then, of course, you know, he's, he also, you know, in addition to, you know, normally he would have to commit suicide as well, but 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 they give and instead he ends up doing that and also choosing his you know his 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 line and in his line and it really oh, just so he yeah. did commit suicide. He supposed uh, I think that if I recall, I think he was supposed to. But like, I thought it. I thought it was kind of like a trade off. Yeah, well, he yeah, I think he was supposed to, but instead he was he ended up just giving up the, his line. Right, right. Which yeah. basically they killed the baby. So, yeah. so in this context, as a viewer, f you. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> there's nothing noble about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that whole thing, I will be honest, kind of threw me. <laughs> that was, and and I'm like I'm like okay. I don't really understand this conversation we're having now about this aid moving on. And then the next moment, like they give up the baby and I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. Oh, this relates to that scene. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, um, so, so I don't, I agree. I like how you brought up the parallel in terms of Blackthorn's perspective. Mm-hmm. You're losing me a bit about this baby killing angle. <laughs> yeah, now that one, and I will freely admit, I was that that one threw me too. And I even like preparing for tonight, I was like, I'm still not a hundred percent clear I, about it. Makes what was se- it makes sense that like he, the aide clearly says, my my line will end with me. Yeah. And and you're not as a viewer who's unaccustomed to these customs, you're you're not sure what that means. And then a few scenes later, suddenly the wife is giving up a baby and blaming her husband for making a choice. And so from a writing perspective, it makes sense. However, I don't think it's been clear about why we 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 ha- why is that thread important? I mean, it does introduce um, because as the wife is like rightfully so not willing to give up her baby, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we get introduced to um Mariko. <clears throat> um to and, and FYI listeners, I am I'm just like both Will and I 
are are gonna butcher these names but we <laughs> we will do our best and when we hear them we will try to re- remember but bear in mind we're not japanese <laughs> we're not <laughs> so so keep that in mind i apologize if i screw anything up but we get introduced to her and she's the one who i'm very curious about because her face is all over the previews for this show yeah. And and so I was expecting to see a lot more of her in this episode, but I'm kind of glad they didn't because they they're moving their pieces as they need, which yeah. I, I always applaud shows on doing. You don't want to show too much at the beginning. But again, back to the point with this whole baby killing thread, I just I don't know if why couldn't they have introduced her in a different way? <laughs> Why, why would they have to do that? Well, they, um, they do it. Yeah. Well, I think they introduce her first when she, they're, they're, when she's out getting lessons because, you know, again, because, you know, she, you know, she's obviously, she's Christian because of the you know, Portuguese had already settled, settled in Japan as far and, and established a trade route and stuff. So she, you know, she, so she speaks Portuguese and she's also been schooled in Latin. So because, because she's Catholic. So of course at the time, you know, Latin was the you know the, the, the tongue spoken to the to, to when in mass and stuff. So, um, so I think you know, so I think they're setting her up as you know, but like you said, not too much. So because they're gonna sprinkle more of her overall arc in the story, given that she is the I guess daughter of one of the um, I guess she's married into the family. Um, married they they were very specific in that conversation yeah. between yeah. her and yeah. Lori um that she was married into it yeah. and i think that's why because we get very brief flashbacks to what i'm believing is the night her dad died mm-hmm. got killed um but she he he talks to her about how she could not like the the right to choose to die with her dad was taken from her and i think that's it, it like they removed that choice or that option because she was married into the noble bloodline mm-hmm. but i'm also not sure the circumstances of his death right so which seems to be very political in nature. And so I think she herself is of noble blood. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like, it's, it's very, it's, it's interesting. She's kind of, she's a player who's, who's been put in kind of like in the background. And now all of a sudden he need we our main player um i'm just going to butcher it um lord t yeah. <laughs> is going to like now needs her which which i i do applaud the writers for like this they they had so much to do mm-hmm. in such in an hour time to do it that they they really kind of made it clear what what was happening but not to a point where you're feeling like everything was being telegraphed because it was funny a little little old me is watching this episode and at the beginning when when he sends one of his main advisors to go check out the ship I'm thinking in my mind this whole time, Will, I swear, I'm being honest, people, about my reaction to the episode. And you can call me stupid, whatever. So so the evil guy (laughs) (laughs) thought was his advisor (laughs) for most of the episode (laughs) until he comes. And and I know, I know, they don't Mm. look alike. They don't. One is very much looks older than the other. I get it. I get it. And I was questioning that myself <laughs> for majority. And I was like, and so, and so about, about halfway through, I'm thinking to myself, he really can't, these aren't the same people. So where is this other guy? Mm-hmm. And then when he la- explains his plan, the evil one, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Quote unquote evil. Evil is a strong word. The 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 one we're not <laughs> supposed to like, the villain of this episode. Yeah. Okay. When he explains the overall his why a the ship is important, why Blackthorn is important in terms of the politics that are currently in play due to the potential impeachment of Lord T. Um, it's at that moment that they bring out and say, no, 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 don't be fooled. (laughs) (laughs) They have known about this the whole time too. And so I, yeah, I, I thought it was very clever and they, with the other character introductions, the other politics at play, they kept you distracted enough to kind of lose pace with the overall um overall thread like the arc of the episode while at the same time it didn't come out of nowhere and you're like well what the fuck no no it all made sense yeah 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 it it really did i mean the i i remember the scene you're talking about too when when lord uh tornaga like sent um his his aide to you know to find out about the the ship and and then, you know and of course all you know and, and, and it's in his fiefdom so you know so but you know the the guy back in, in, you know so he dispatches his aid from Osaka back to back you know back to to the to the little fishing village and and and, and so it, it, it he's you know it and while you know so the nephew and the other family and uh, Lord uh, yeah Lord Y who is you know he definitely has thing with his little boiling uh, people alive boiling you... people well well the nephew boiling people yeah and yeah and then also just like you know his you know he's got his little boy his his young servant male servant and then of course he was also had a female ser- the, the young lady to service him as well um you know so he's you know they're definitely you know he's got a he, he has his appetites and, and I, uh, you know i i think what they were trying to do is they they first start with and and i'm i'm thankful for them answering my question because as soon as i saw that guy get boiled alive i was like why the heck what the heck is this what is Mm -hmm. happening and then when they said um that lord in particular is obsessed with hearing and witnessing someone who's at that point of death like their realization um, to contrast that with the watching two people have sex, it's it's like life almost. So yeah. that ecstasy. So so I I think that's what in a very disturbing way. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think the sex scene was needed, but then again, they've had far worse on Game of Thrones. Yeah, and it was, and this is this was, this was. I mean, apparently in the book, it was even more disturbing. Oh, uh, I, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, both, both, both the, the sex scene, uh, but also the how the person who got picked to be boiled was also um, more. It was, it was. Blackthorn did I don't need to know. I don't. No, know. no. Blackthorn basically wanted to like didn't want to make the choice what you saw what you saw that play out kind of in the in the in the in the show as well uh and they drew lots and and then when the guy who drew drew the short short straw um did you know obviously the welsh on their agreement then they started fighting and then the japanese just, just grabbed one uh, just grabbed one person randomly and 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 who had won in the lottery and, and dumped him into the bowling pit. So that, yeah. So, you know, so they, you know, they, 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 they condensed it, tw- tweaked it around. I think it worked better, you know, for TV just fine. <laughs> Cause it was still pretty, pretty, um, pretty brutal to watch and hear. Right. Yeah. But my point, bring it up that, that those two scenes and, and all, and also whenever they do finally, you know, he dispatches his aide, and they all meet up there when, as we were talking about Rodriguez's in role and introduction into the story. Um, it, you know, it, it showed that 
even though Tornaga is like having to deal with all these, you know, these other regents who are trying to impeach him because the, you know, and the whole reason why they're, you know, they're on the verge of war anyways, because the, the last Taiko Taiko died and his son is too young to, um, to lead. Um, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, I, I still have, I still have my eyes on all the things in the kingdom <laughs> and defeat them. And also I, you know, I just, it was funny how the whole, the whole thing changed where he was like, Oh no, 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 no. I was just offering, I was about to offer this to my, to my, to my brother. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. We got this grand prize for you here. So again, just sort of seeing the whole, the politics and stuff and how people are like playing the game you know, as far as trying to position themselves uh, to, 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 you know, gain favor or gain the upper hand, whatever, whenever the situation warrants it. Right. Right. I, I will be honest. I like the politics. I do too. There, there, there are so many different players that I could follow, like probably 15% of actually what was going on um, with all of like the, the quote unquote lower characters. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm just, I was just following the main line. I don't, I don't know if you're reported. <laughs> Where's pilot? Where's pilot? Get me. Get me pilot. Um, even though he's an asshole and, and, and very somewhat of a bit of a prick, but yeah. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Well, that concludes our discussion. And again, we're going to go much deeper next week as we recap three episodes of Shogun's first season. Um, So hopefully you are on board with that. And that leads us to wrapping up our season one discussion of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I'm going to start this by saying, again, I'm all about honesty tonight. So I watched these two episodes on Mm -hmm. Sunday. I thought they were good. I thought, especially the last episode, very solid finale. Yeah. But it's it's very telling to me that when we record on a Thursday and I watch things on Sundays, I, throughout the week, there were specific scenes of Shogun that would randomly come to my mind or I would Mm -hmm. randomly think about. I didn't think anything about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nothing. Uh, And and that's, I don't, to me, it's telling in the sense of A, rewatchability, B, Mm -hmm. how much I really was in awe of things versus just pure entertainment. I think these were two very entertaining episodes. I think this whole season was very entertaining. It's not something six months from now, I'm going to be like, man, I miss being in that world. Let me go and put on Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I I hear you. I mean, I I it, I, I I will admit that I think uh, these two worlds, <laughs> the <they're laughs> definitely overwhelmed. I mean, I was complete. I was really entertained by the Smiths. Uh, I think these two, like you said, the finales were were the finale in particular was very was solid. Um, I, I, you know, the ending was one that uh, has a lot of p- possibilities, several possibilities where it can go. Very clever ending. Yeah, very, very clever ending. Because I felt like if the way, if whatever, whichever way it goes, I feel satisfied. Exactly. I, I agree 100%. That's what I thought too. The fact that they end it so inconclusively, if it gets picked up for a second season, then I can see them totally writing them way their way out of that and continuing on with the story if they don't viewers can just be like oh they dead yeah yep (laughs) (laughs) it's perfectly fine like like either way and even if they are dead it's not well that was stupid no it kind of makes sense because john and jane a bit naive yes a bit naive about this whole situation totally makes sense why they wouldn't last for or they only lasted however long they were in it which was probably a very brief amount of time because they just they were not thinking things through well and i'm said that too because 
Yeah, I know last week, or maybe was I think it was last week or week before, we were we were having discussions as far as like what's the time frame of this marriage and relationship? Yeah. And I and I was having that feeling this week where I was like, how much time has elapsed? Um mm-hmm. with with everything. And we got some indication of that with the finale with John moving his mom to New York. Um, or Michael moving to moving his mom to New York, but I don't want to jump past infidelity because another thing you said about the naivety really plays into this as well, because thinking, you know, because the infidelity that was happening here, uh, you know, with John getting up with Bev after, you know, we we had their the relationships, you know, after last week's brilliant episode, I mean, I will that this after seeing all eight, uh, six is definitely, you know, I wasn't kidding last week when I said it may, you know, whenever I talk therapy episodes, I'll be discussing this one and Doom Patrol. I mean, as far as my like bellwether, <laughs> as far as uh, how well a therapy episode works, but the you know i think this inf- the 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 naivety play comes into play in the mistakes the rookie mistakes that they were making because of the broken part of the relationship because you know we saw the evolution throughout the series prior to things going sideways where they were a competent team they were you know they hadn't you know they had their no more fails and and they were they were really working working very well until the relationship broke down and then they got sloppy and so we got the second fell you know last week and you know where they had before the big blow up and then yeah. and then now this one and even during when they had the fight with bev they were making like mistakes that they were making in episode one and i and it wasn't because and i think it just for me it was just in you know with long-term relationships you know when you're going through bad breakups or bad bad patches or even in relationships that aren't necessarily heading to break up your judgment and things do get impacted and you know and we see it like with you know in our, with ourselves or people we know when they're when things are going bad you can tell at work that you know they're distracted and stuff and we saw that kind of come into play in this episode in, in, in episode seven you know because they, they Bev played dead and they like fell for it. Um, so yeah, so yeah. it's it's interesting because yeah. um, I I agree episode eight is stronger than episode seven, um, but I felt more naivety, um, naiveness come mm. out in episode eight. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Which, well, which, and I, I I don't I don't mean to like jump to that, but episode yeah. seven is pretty much infidelity because initially you're under the belief that john has been cheating on jane with bev Mm -hmm. but bev turns out to be a a target for another agency and then they end up through through all of this chasing end up losing her and john failing and then both failing the mission which which I kind of liked because um, I kept thinking about how at one point that therapist said to them, I think you guys just need to work on separate projects. Yep. <laughs> and so I, this episode, even though it's not my favorite, um, I, I can appreciate why they, how everything played out in sense mm-hmm. of, oh, he cheated on me. Oh, this was a mission the whole time. I'm trying to help him just fix this because seriously, John, like you had a yeah. month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, I'm glad you brought that up because it really does illustrate the points that they were making in that sixth episode. And that's why I think it's so brilliant because it was a nice book. It was a sort of nice epilogue to why the therapist was like, maybe y'all should work on separate missions. And it also like really, Again, and just their it's, issues. It was yeah. just a continuing yeah. boiling pot of mm-hmm. their issues are not yeah. getting better because they're yeah. actually not. Neither one of them is compromising in anything. Yeah, yeah. And even so though, they're just uh, at this um, standstill. Yeah, yeah. Even even when John was even even when John tried to use the timeout, 
there yeah. whenever. Yeah. I, w- yeah, I was like, oh, great. Now we get the time out. This is, <laughs> you may need to go back to therapy just to clear up whatever is going on here. Yeah. Um, I was surprised that we ended up meeting his mom. Did not mm-hmm. expect that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I liked it. And, and initially, we just see her because he's making soup for Jane, which... Yeah. I, I can appreciate also how how much they both screw up and yell at each other, but there's still that love there. Like he throws out the soup from the neighbor yep. and then makes her soup yep. and everything. Um and and um <laughs> John just needs to understand how to call Jane's bluff because I knew the moment she said that she had screwed two targets mm-hmm. <laughs> during the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, no, she, she lying. She doing a, one of those of like, Oh, we're playing chicken right now. So you yep. did that. I did that too. Yep. Much more than you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 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 It just really, yeah. I was just like, Oh boy there. Yeah. It's just like, the, the, it's just the it's the it's the messiness of 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 relationships that that I think you know we've talked about how the series really just goes through the ebbs and flows of of that all that and 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 it it really is on display in in the in the context of of a spiral. Yeah. So so with the finale, it's called the breakup, and um, this why I. I would argue that this episode put how naive they are together on full display is because I knew from the moment Max died, it wasn't John going after Jane. (laughs) And I knew like, so, so it actually quite pissed me off when we get to the scene where they finally, we finally see them together at the museum Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, wait a second. And while they're talking, I'm like, wait a second. They they don't realize that it was the company? What, right. Why? Why? Why would you not think it was <laughs> your... What? You just... Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> well, I, you know, it, 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 well, see, that's the whole, like, the manipulation that Hi Hi did throughout, you know, of, I don't of, of know boost. if it was okay. Will, well, I'm gonna be honest. I don't yeah. know if it was manipulation, considering they gave Hi Hi a fingernail, and neither one of them seemed to be questioning this. True, that is true. So, yeah, so same for yeah. You, you and I would never give anyone. What we would be like? What the fuck? Why you want to? Why you want a fingernail? I mean, we would, that's been like every episode. We like come back to that. It's like. Why do you need the? I'm still not sure why they need the fingernail. I guess this well, is see how stiff. Well, this I mean, I guess the, I guess Jane, John, and Jane too really like, you know, to answer that question when they see they're so sycophantic thinking the high high is like a god. So, well, you know, I I kind of I I found that to be really interesting because it they they with their missions and the assignments. Hi Hi does have this whoever or whatever Hi Hi is mm-hmm. has this knowledge that sets things in motion. Now, granted, Jane, John and Jane, our John and Jane should have argued back. Well, then why did we screw up on three missions? <laughs> right. <laughs> why weren't we given like it was there were things that seemed to be and I think there were signs of this earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe even in 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 the infidelity episode where Hi Hi told Jane something mm-hmm. um, that that caused an inconvenience almost. Yeah. That's so, good point. yeah. So I it's almost as though Hi Hi recognized about halfway through that at least John wasn't good enough for the company so Mm -hmm. was trying to set them up purposely for failure but wanted to retain jane yeah yeah i agree with that i can see that and yeah and i guess that's maybe 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 when i say manipulate maybe they're manipulating the circumstances to get to that to that point so thanks for fleshing that out yeah 
Right. No, I, I, I agree with that because, and, and it also is just like, so hi, hi knew the whole time that John was talking to his mom whole time, whole mm-hmm. time. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, so I set aside probably the first 20 minutes when they're under that disillusionment. And then the next 20 minutes when we got the neighbor. Oh yeah. <laughs> which, which I told you after we were done recording last week, and mm-hmm. I knew this wasn't going to come true, but I told you, I made an offhanded remark and I said, I bet you hi, hi is the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That did not happen. However, I am a bit satisfied and pleased with myself that those words did come. From I, will, his mouth. I gave you, I gave you credit. I will give you full credit for that one. I will, because I was like, as soon as I, as soon as I was like, here it comes, and then he said, "You're high, high." When John said that, I was like, "Oh shit!" And he's like. But then, of course, we we learned he's not. But yeah, I gave, I was like, I'm giving credit. I'm I'm gonna give Sarah a point for that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's an agent, an agent of real estate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which I I liked I liked that nuance, and then I really enjoyed. I wasn't I did not foresee the true serum coming back into play. Right. Um. But but it did feel like that moment in the house when they're mm-hmm. just going after one another that did feel like the original Mr. and Mrs. Smith movie. Yeah. I think it was an intentional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was fully there. And I was like, okay, now we're getting into it. Two agents against each other. Yeah. For some yeah. reason, they don't go after the company. I don't understand. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, I, I know what the high high. Just one like one last note. One of our uh, on our uh, YouTube channel, one of our listeners um, note in a comment noted his theory on high high is that it was Toby. <laughs> Who's Toby? Remember Toby Paul um, Ron Perlman's character. Oh. So, yeah. Oh no, Which John got and killed for pushing him off of that roof. Yeah, well, maybe that's what that was the final straw. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but I feel like Hi Hi hasn't liked him since the ski trip. Yeah, yeah. His, because John went after that, like didn't yeah. stop the mission. Right, right. Like he he got the um, that girl out of the hostage situation, mm-hmm. which was not part of the assignment. So not, so. Yeah. And and probably Hi Hi hasn't liked him since he started talking to his mom, even though he was supposed to cut off all communications with everyone. I'm just saying. Yep. Yep. Just saying. Saying. yep, yep. So so but, yeah, but, but no, that's a that's a fair point. But again, Toby literally peed himself. <laughs> so I, I think I think as soon as that happened, John would have been hit with a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but to your point about the fight and the homage to the uh, to the movie. Oh, it was just an homage to the movie. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, but no, I, I didn't know if you had anything more to say about oh, that. No. Oh, okay, okay, we've moved yeah. on, Will. <laughs> okay, oh okay, just 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 fair enough. Just was making sure this didn't want to leave anything on the table here since our last discussion about about the show. So yeah, but I, I guess with that, for me, the the. With the truth serum, and I'm glad you brought that earlier administration of it with the uh, in the very first episode, actually, with the um, was it was was that it the first was episode? The first episode, that was the second episode. Second episode, yeah, with the, yeah, it was the second episode with yeah with the truth serum. Sorry, yeah, they start to they start to run together, but yeah, it's uh, the second episode because that the prelude to the truth serum oh, being administered right. was yeah. a weird dog park. Thing. Yes. Yeah. The dog. Yeah. Yeah. That. And then also. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just like that whole sequence. Out. <laughs> you know, I would rank episode two pretty low on my list, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was my. Yeah. That was my definitely least favorite episode of the series for sure. Um. But uh, yeah, that 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 brutal honesty finally comes through, and um, yeah, they the all all all. It's yeah. so. I like how you put brutal honesty because I feel like these two technically have been honest with one another the entire season, Mm. but the trust has not been there. 
And yes. so, and that's why John made the decision to give them both truth serum because he can't, and honestly, he can't trust her. And she, she's told him that from the beginning, like, yeah. Yeah. I am a liar. I like, I have so, and I'm, I'm glad, especially she admitted she, like sh why she wasn't allowed in the CIA. She has mm. sociopathic tendencies. So, yeah. so I, I just feel like even though it was a very honest conversation, I, I I don't know if I would say that it's not like these two have never been honest. Like we, we got to observe them have a conversation that we have seen them have throughout all of these episodes, yet they were high off their mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. they were forced to tell the truth in a way that their partner would accept, no, that's what they really think. Yeah. And like, like I'm not second guessing that you're trying to pull one over on me because we're both experiencing this true serum slash like drug thing. Yeah. yeah that, that's yeah. I mean, I think that's, that was the, that was the real telling thing for me with that. I think you're right. I mean, the, the that, honesty and that the, the trust factor was just was it when they had it when we saw what in those earlier episodes it, 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 it you know it, it registered mm -hmm. uh like you know like whenever because whenever they first kissed you know um you know it was you know even though like when john was was the one like probing you know jane jane made the first move yeah and that was when they were you know and, and so that was when they were starting to build that trust but then of course that trust was was shattered and then um and then they built up those those walls again uh was which was so it was smart of john to like give them that three serum so they could just once and for all it, 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 what could be their last moments after john two and jane two came uh they could go to their demo you know if they do get killed they will f truly know how they feel about each other and they have or if they make it out of the situation and they can pick up the pieces and, and move forward, which, you know, they did reveal their true names. Well, you know, obviously Denise told uh, Jane one, Michael's real, you know, his real name was Michael. But uh, whenever they were in that moment there in the safe room, uh, you know, she finally does you know, share that she is Alana. But then to your point about the truth and, and, and their real feelings, they prefer to be John and Jane, because that's who they really are now. Yeah, I and it, that's who they are to each other. Their whole relationship, <laughs> that's who they've been. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, like I said, to preface this conversation, I find it fascinating how when talking about this show with you and when watching it, I'm fully engaged. I like these characters. I like this dynamic. The mm -hmm. world, I have questions that yeah. have failed to be answered, but whatever. I would be questioning a lot more. Um, but at the same time, when I walk away from it and when we stop talking about it, it doesn't linger yeah. for me. There, there, it's It's not something where I think will make my top at the end of the, like my top list at the end of the year. Um, just because as much as I'm entertained mm -hmm. and curious about things and um, like talking to you about this show, it's not something that I am completely like head over heels obsessed with in yeah. terms of this world. Um, now, I do hope it gets renewed for a season two because I will be curious to see what potentially a season two would look like. Yeah. Um, and and I do, I just, at the end of the day, I, I like John and Jane. I like yeah. these two actors. I like their chemistry together. I want to see Toby again. I want to see Toby like not pee himself, but maybe poop himself. <laughs> that would be fun. 
<laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Grandpa, yeah. Gra- gra- grandpa Toby, since they, you know, they agreed to have two kids, you know, so. <laughs> well, well, but she's a liar, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Not at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth serum has to wear off at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's the outset. I mean, I think you know, either way, either way, this series goes, um, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. You're right. I mean, it was entertaining, um, and and and, and I completely agree with you. I, I really, you know, it's been a long, you know, I know we took a chance on this show, and 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 it's like thinking like one piece or a, a show where we've just taken a chance on something that's not necessarily, you know, comic book or, you know, just, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's, you know, we can say it's MCU adjacent because, uh, you know, Donald Glover was <laughs> in Spider-Man. So that's, 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 that's how we linger into it. But that being said, um, I, I hope, I don't know if the show would work for me, to be honest, if they go like an anthology route, let's just say John and Jane, our John and Jane do die, and they come back for a second season. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I would. I, I don't. I don't know if it would work for me the same if they went that route. Um, so, either yeah. So if they do come back, I do want with 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 Donald and, and Maya um, and, and sort of because I mean there's still some threads that are out there. I mean we still got to figure out what's going on with High High. For example. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, it, it like like you said at the beginning, like the door is open for p- possibilities. While at the same time, if this is it, they've they shut it enough for the viewer to be satisfied. Yep. Yep. And we got to find out if uh, yeah if 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 uh, Paul Dano's character uh, you know that's his movie Dick. So <laughs> did he did he make the sale? <laughs> um. All right. Well, on yeah. that. No, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on uh, Twitter, formerly ex- formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. I'm just so thankful that I get to go second after you say that, because you don't often switch them, yeah. but every so often, and it's just a relief for me, because I know if I had to go first... I would switch them all the time. (laughs) 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 And so on that note, you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. 